with beer. Hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Cat and Blaining Bear coming at you with yet another cat with beer again with my dear friend Hartley Jackson. Thank you for having me again and again. My pleasure. Would you like Thank to you throw for some paper again? Yeah, yeah chuck a paper. Go on. More oh, relaxed. Oh, today. Oh, that was great. Very okay. good. Yeah! <laughs> yes, there fantastic. we go. Fantastic. Oh, look, they brought Enoki san up on the screen. Thank you, no, producer. No, no, no. Got Enoki san on our uh, monitor ah, here. That's no. very helpful. Mm, very great. We, 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 I learned so much about this. wrestling in the last two episodes, but there is more stuff I want to yeah. ask. Wrestling, not just the matches, like where can we see it? How can we watch it? And how can I, as a noob coming on, or maybe people who are listening when they come to Japan, how they can they come and watch your games and stuff? There's a lot of things I want to mm. ask still. So, <laughs> first of all, this is the random, most random one. Bollywood movie? You were in a Bollywood movie? Jack, you're in a we Bollywood movie, my friend. One. Yes, I think it was the first Indian sci-fi Bollywood movie ever <laughs> made. <laughs> sci-fi? Tell us yeah. the story. Love Story 2050. Mm -hmm. Love Story 2050? Yeah. That's what it's called? Yeah. Tell us more. Well, I was uh, working as a security guard at the time to supplement my, my wrestling. Uh, of course, throwing people out of clubs and then throwing people out of the rings, kind of and like which the same country? thing. Can you always, like, no, this was Australia. Okay. Australia. And they actually came to, to film it in Adelaide. Oh, wow. Oh, and, uh, that's where we're from. It's a very small place. Small place. Okay. Um, so I had kind of everything that they needed there uh, to create this movie. And uh, Really? The company I was with got approached, oh, we need some guys to be tough guys. You know, do you have any? It's like, oh, yeah, we've got these guys. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's when we just showed up on shoot one day. And then, yeah, with the star of the film, we did all this, like, stair chase scene. And, wow. Uh, yeah. Did you do any of the Bollywood dance? No, they do in the movie. Yeah. But uh, I didn't. Okay. So. You would have been an amazing Bollywood dancer. Yes. Were you a good guy or a bad You're guy? I was a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And then I had a speaking part, too. Oh! oh. But then they dubbed over it. Uh, <laughs> in Hindi? No, no, Hindi? with some other. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't have to pay me anymore. Because oh, there course. was these like proper pay, pay brackets and everything. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, they did it properly then. Yeah. Okay, great. Wow, that's amazing. Yep. Love Story 2050. Yep. And Priyanka Chopra, she was there. And really? a huge mega star Whoa. now. And, uh, wow. Yeah, I think that was her, one of her first movies that she ever did. What and year was this? This was 2006, I think wow. it was. Yeah, and uh, chatted to her and everything and taught her how to jump over these things. And, wow. Yeah, so. Love Story 2050. Check, Check it out. Check it out, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. And uh, oh. more. You've been on Japanese TV as uh, mm. Street Fighter character Zangief. Yes, Zangief. Uh, I was on Downtown, episode of Downtown. Downtown. Downtown is the most Whoa. famous TV show in Japan. Dear That's listen. a story. So uh, had to go out and rehearse just swinging and hitting for like 30 seconds. Wait, what? As in giving someone a lariat? Yeah, like I would hit, hit them on the side like this. You know, okay. Really hard. And then like, oh, harder, right. harder. This is another shave those sideburns. Yep. Harder yeah. stories, right? Okay. So then I do it on this guy and I'm like, great, got it down. Next rehearsal, different guy. Next rehearsal, different guy. Next rehearsal, different guy. On the day, rehearsal, different guy. So I'm what? not really understanding what's going so on. So who are you supposed to put, punch? I'm pu question, punching right? someone who's dressed up as Ryu, the, the other oh, character. Uh -huh. And uh, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just showing up. Did you know the my... show downtown? Did you know how famous the show it was? I know of it. I don't, you know. So you were pro you would have been hitting the comedians, I guess. Yeah, like I was. Like Hamachan and all those, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but then I thought it was a rib, a joke on me. Because they're like, oh, it should only go for about 30 seconds or so. I hit the guy straight for two minutes. That <laughs> I'm, like, trying to hold in my... I'm about to die. Oh, from gassing out. Yeah, okay. like just too many hits. And then I'm thinking, maybe this is like that joke show where the joke's on me. Uh, and it's like, how I long see. is he going to go for until oh, he's right. like... Yeah. Hang on. But so, the, hang on. I, 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 I lost track now. <laughs> you, you, same here? Yeah, I've lost track no, too. What? There's so, a Ryu cosplayer. Yes. And he just stands there and you hit him in the arm? He's controlled by a kid. So, and he what? Has, he has to walk forward to try and come towards me. And oh. I'm going to hit him as hard as I can. For him, yeah, I, just, I, try, I have wow. no idea what's going on. Oh, so the kid is having a kind of computer control, yeah. aka remote control yeah. of the new character. And then character. the comedians can't laugh. Oh, oh it's one of these. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're not allowed to laugh. So it's one of these. <laughs> we, we love that. Yeah, so as soon as I hit it really hard, they laugh and they're going to put money in the... Uh, oh, I see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, this is a Japanese comedy trope mm. where ridiculousness mm. ensues and the comedians, the stars of the show, yeah. have to not laugh. And if they do laugh, they yeah. get punished in some way. And then we in did uh, the Silent Library one yeah. where uh, they uh, can't laugh at what happens to the other person, yeah. like comedy stuff. And then We've we, discussed Silent yeah, Library on the show. Ran in, we had masks on, and we grabbed one and threw them as high up in the air as we can. There's probably about eight of us wrestlers dressed in masks. Yeah, yeah as high as we could. <gasps> You know? Hang on. They're sitting at a table in a library. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's silent. You, you run in, yeah. grab a man, <laughs> yeah. a small man, yeah. and just throw him in the air. Yeah. Up in the air. <laughs> we practiced on a stranger. You right. know, like again, practiced on him. We thought, oh, this is going to look really good. We just good. a stranger, just a random person yeah. in a real and library. And just yeah. them in and the now just on the street at the combini. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And I was like, oh, that we're doing it to him. Okay. We got no chance. It's like, if we kill him, he's, you know. Oh, yeah. It's funny how we talk about wrestling injuries. Those comedians, I reckon, oh, they're getting hurt more yeah. than anybody. My yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, they go so, to hell. Zangief has been once, but yeah. you've been like with other shows on, on TV yeah. before. I've what done with them. that usually work? Uh, the company that I work for would kind of get contacted and go, oh, have you got someone who's a wrestler looking? Oh, yeah, we do. We've got wrestlers. <laughs> mm. And then we'll go on the show, and there's one where I had to like wear a hat and a suit. <laughs> they try and guess my job. I saw that oh. one. You know. Yeah. <laughs> on um, Jackson's Facebook. Yeah. This was so funny. You had a photo of you there with this button-up shirt. With this hat, <laughs> yeah. And your caption was, they'll never guess. <laughs> Not in this hat. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, so you've been on Japanese TV quite a bit. Yeah, and done music videos. And, music videos. Yeah. What do you do in music videos? Uh, we did one for the band called Flow. Oh, really? And uh, they... Had like they were in a dream, and then when he woke up, he was in a wrestling ring, and then we we fight them. Wow! Yeah. So you've been have a lot of like not just in the ring experience, but mm. also just on TV experience, mm, commercial sort of stuff. Oh, I have no idea what's going on. Show business connoisseur. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm like that. <laughs> yeah, I probably won't come to that story. Oh! <laughs> no worries. So a lot of TV experience on top of that yeah. as well. You know the drunk who comes in. And lays on the floor and sleeps, but when it's his time to hit the lines, he's you know sure that's that's me okay. when I do those TV shows. <laughs> no idea what's going on. I don't even worry about it anymore. Like no. I gotta, I just know that once the cameras roll, hmm. I'll be in Still. my yeah the zone, hmm. oh. and it'll be amazing. I can't, I can't uh, rehearse or I just don't have that, you know. But when it's time to go, you've got me. Oh, it's the same oh, as wrestling, yeah. isn't it? It's it is. Spend the whole, like, you know, 23 and a half hours yeah. you know, passed out, and then when you get in the ring, that's here it. We you go. get up and you, you're, you're on your A game. Yeah. yeah. So I'm the same with rehearsal. And they're kind of always worried, mm -hmm. and they ask, like, my uh, my company person, they're like, oh, is you, uh, you going to be okay? Is you? And it's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And then it's like, rah, and they're all, yeah. So they keep inviting me back, so they must like it. Well, or it's one big joke on me, so. You had a question clearly, young lady. Yeah. Um, both of you, like, I know, like, you mentioned your biggest, like, experience with pain and, and, and mm. injuries in the ring. But what was, like, your most painful experience? Maybe not yourself, but maybe you <laughs> accidentally hit someone too hard or something, you know? Oh, I, I have a story. No, oh, hey, uh -oh. this is going to be fantastic, okay? <laughs> Do so, tell. I used to wear wrestling trunks mm. traditional wrestling trunks budgie smugglers undies you know like just, wrestler you know, sorry do you know that expression budgie smugglers mm -mm. that's what we call <laughs> small underwear in australia budgie oh. smugglers it's like you put a budgie down your pants yeah, you're trying to budgie. smuggle it oh <laughs> yeah. okay very so, so, yeah. Yeah. Very tight. i used to wear the traditional wrestling tights and after one of the matches they're like oh can you do the main event match and i'm like yeah there's no problem because uh, someone got hurt and it was an exploding Barbed wire <laughs> bat <laughs> death match. Right? <laughs> now I like I like death match wrestling and stuff like that. So I love doing it. But I didn't expect like <laughs> so I got hit with the bat and it exploded. But then all over my legs and body were just oh. horrible burns. Oh wow. Yeah. So from then on, that's when I changed into my okay. jean deathmatch kind of style uh, pants. So if it was ever surprised, I was always ready for it. Because then sometimes, and then I started wrestling a lot of those style of matches. Did you start putting on a wife beater so that your skin? No, didn't I was always topless. Okay. Because I still kind of like I don't mind being hurt. Burnt here, okay. just not in between the legs. Right. Oh, <laughs> you know? damn. 
arm. So, oh, yeah. because it exploded. And yeah. then you, the, the wrestling pants I used to wear some kind of plastic material as well. Yeah. yeah so, oh, no, because I had just bare skin here, mm. knee pads, all oh, here, yeah, it was burnt stomach. Oh, yeah. oh I don't mind my stomach and stuff being burnt, but just, yeah, other places. Yeah, it was that um, downstairs. Jewels just, yeah. Area, that's Few something. places you knew want to keep fire <laughs> yeah, away yeah, from yeah. as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. Do, it ex wait a second. Exploding barb wire baseball bat. Mm. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? So it's like a baseball bat covered in barbed wire with little, uh, like, explosion oh, wow. uh, things on there. And you press this button, a siren goes off knowing that the bat's loaded, and then you hit and it explodes. I, I have no words now. Yeah. I'm out of words. So that was uh, created by the legend uh, Atsushi Onida. And uh, he's into politics. He was into politics too. And uh, yeah, he's the king of king of those style of matches. Um, if people, when people come to Japan, if they want to see wrestling, yeah. if they can't read Japanese and so forth, how can they yeah, check out a match? If, if I would like to yeah. see a match with exploding barbed wire <laughs> yeah, yeah. on a baseball, but how would I go around getting there? Well, I mean, there's many different shows in Japan. Mm. So if you can kind of see everything now is pretty much you can seek out online. Yeah. And it's actually not too complicated to just show up to the event and buy tickets buy on the ticket day. The door. No. Um, okay. You know, and do then. Do they not get booked out in advance? They can do. Some, some can shows do. do. I mean, uh, generally there are sales at the end of the day, depending on the size of the venue and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but it's actually easy to kind of follow. And uh, you can just ro yeah rock up, get your ticket, or you can pick it up at you know your Lawson Family Mart and all that oh, sort that's, of stuff. That's if complicated you book, if you're a follower. Yeah, yeah if you book online. Tricky. So yeah. but, look it up online. I yeah. see. And if find you, the venue. Yeah. Maybe book if you can if you have a credit card. But yeah. If you don't, you just go on the day. And just go on the day. Sorry, go on the day. And, it's simple. and you can you can translate from Japanese to English if there's you. ticket sales on the day. They always let you know. If there's tickets still available. If you also have a, a particular wrestler you want to see, they'll almost definitely have, um, when they're wrestling, have their events up on their Twitter or Facebook. Yeah. And, and then you can actually direct message them and get tickets. Buy tickets from which them. That actually oh, yeah. helps them. <clears throat> that's part yeah. of the system yeah. in that Japan as well. That's like the acting, the noruma kind of thing. Yes, it's, that's mm. exactly what it is. So if I wanted to watch any of your guys' matches, how would I go about messaging you so the ticket gets credited to your name? Well, uh, through Twitter, mm. uh, Instagram, anything like that. And then what, what you'll do is you'll send the information through to me. I'll send that on to the company. And then tickets then get sent on to you from the company. <clears throat> yeah. um, anyone who does come to Japan, I recommend you check out uh, Pro Wrestling because uh, it is quite something. And if you can find uh, an event with colorful things like exploding barbed wire baseball bat matches, you'll mm. have a grand old time maybe get a seat near the back yeah yeah <laughs> if your first, if experience. first first experience ever yeah get a seat near the back so you can watch everyone and then you'll find that you want to get closer and closer and closer until you're at the front row so as a, as a new build start yeah. at the back and then move forward and also price wise i assume the, the back is a little bit cheaper maybe yeah it's cheaper there are yeah. different sections different tiers of front and then row also is going by yourself so. in japan is actually quite common yeah. there are a lot of people who go to wrestling by themselves and the community is very welcoming to new mm. people as well so if you're ever stuck the, the fans out the front will help you they'll direct you oh this is where you get your ticket and they'll help you so much to if you, you look know. like you're there to see wrestling and you look like you're lost yeah people are gonna help <laughs> yeah. you you know which um, is so it's not a scary kind of closed off fun group it's actually a very welcoming very welcoming community. and that's that's the thing a lot of people do seem oh I don't know how I'm gonna be going mm. to an event but everyone who's gone to an event by themselves have really enjoyed it and actually made friends with other people and uh, and all that sort of stuff. It's so, yeah. one of the interesting things about wrestling and fighting and mm -hmm. heavy metal and all these like Rah! extreme activities is the communities are generally very, very nice and yeah. very welcoming and supportive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting We community. want support. We want, uh, exactly. you know, we're all, all the wrestlers have completely different different backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, our lives. You might be into heavy metal, I'm into, you know, this other music and you you watch anime and this person watches drama shows this one loves horror or this one's a weirdo that one's but we're all the same mm. we're all the same when it comes together mm. come together yeah. for wrestling mm. is there like a little hint for like if you're like very first time there you go at the back should you bring a towel should you bring some water should you not sit at if, the front because of explosions yeah. if you're watching the bottom on cure die wrestle you should uh, you should bring a uh, a raincoat there's a, there's a pair of twins who wrestle 
and uh, their matches involve they always involve throwing buckets of water slime yeah. uh, they throw slime. pigs heads yeah. at one another oh. things like yeah. maggots and things get thrown oh. around so everyone in the yeah. first Oof. thrive front rows has to come with a raincoat to put on yeah. everyone puts their raincoat on at the start they of the match they actually wear raincoats actually wear, the audience wears yeah. raincoats <laughs> but yeah, for, for traditional wrestling I would, I would go to the back first if you're a new timer so you're able to watch everyone see how everyone acts and then like ah, oh. and then you get more comfortable moving yeah moving forward if you go on a death match you should death matches with all the barbed wire and the bleeding and all that yeah. kind of stuff you should stay at the back for your first one yeah because you, you could get, get blood out on of you way. in the front row oh so. and also they're going to throw into the chairs and stuff yes you have people oh. telling you to get out of the way yeah, but you have stand to stand up get out of your chair because yeah. a wrestler's going to get thrown into the rack of chairs so they kind of that they might know that someone might get thrown in that direction yeah. so they warn the audience a couple of seconds yeah. before <clears throat> or they try no like you'll be outside and then i'll have the wrestler and i'll be like all right i'm gonna tell them to move because i'm gonna throw them oh, in the chairs you tell them yeah and then the youngest like, oh, get out of the way all the fans kind of know that something's going to happen mm -hmm. so that's, they'll start moving that's part of what you buy yeah. your front row ticket for, yeah, so that you can get moved yeah. to have you're your chair of, used as yeah. a weapon Man. you're part of the action yeah that's it um you yes coached at wwe yes i did Ooh. It's amazing. Yes. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I uh, met the head coach of the Performance Center of WWE in Japan on a tour when I first came. Uh, so he invited me over to do a couple of guest coaching gigs, um, you know, teach people how to wrestle and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, once I was kind of getting to the, my knee was starting to bother me a lot. And I thought, oh, I better think about the future. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. maybe coaching. I've, I've always coached wrestlers as well. So doing it full time for the WWE was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Mm. Uh, so I went over there and did that, but I started to miss wrestling too much. Mm. Like it was an amazing experience, but I just felt like my identity was like, I need to get back in the ring. Be in the um, ring. At that time I was only 39 still. So I was like, mm, I got a plenty of year, plenty of years left. The, the WWE, you didn't get to do any matches for them? No, I didn't because I had my knee, knee issues. Oh, okay. oh, so you were right. teaching, so you were but not wrestling. Time. Yeah, because uh, I couldn't pass the medical examination. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, really? But Whereas here, there is no medical examination. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> here, it's here. It's yeah. Oh, you God, want you to wrestle? Crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, right That's this way. Yeah, yeah. So wait a, wait a You did not pass the exam for WWE. So mm. you, you're like, all right. Let's go back to Japan yeah. so I can go into the ring. Because here it's the fighting spirit. What? Over, fighting spirit. Over in WWE, they're, they're obviously looking out for their best interests of their talent and also longevity. If I have a bad knee, how long can they invest in me? Mm -hmm. And also, It's a short investment life. Whereas if I'm perfect, they can put 10, 15 years on me. So mm. it comes down to that. Too. And I would imagine America being the litigious society that it is. Yeah. If your injury gets worse, there's the risk of them getting sued. Which has happened in the past to them. So they're very, very cautious. And, you know, they've got concussion protocols, everything like that. If you bump your head slightly, you have to go do this test with the computer, which I'm terrible at anyway. Really? Yeah. Really? But if you, you a... bump your head, you're going to go, like, test your rig reflexes or yeah, something. Uh, yeah, like, uh, there's this thing, and it would be like, you know, when you see the butterfly, press A, and you'll be like, Bleh. and I'm like, oh, wait, that's not a butterfly. Oh. That sounds but like the most <laughs> pro wrestler game ever. <laughs> butterfly! <laughs> <laughs> Which one is A? Yeah. <laughs> but that's the problem. We're all like that in there. So. <laughs> Everybody's like that. Yeah. The man who designed the game is like that. Ah. Um, yeah. So now, okay, yeah. you're jacked. Tell yeah. us about your weights. Yeah, every day. Every freaking day. Every day, day. even now, yeah. every day. Well, like, it before my knee surgery, mm. yeah, I'd go in every day. Uh, I do what's called bro splits, which is uh, oh. bro science, the one body part each day, mm -hmm. like legs one day, shoulders one day, biceps one day, you know, all the chest one day. Uh, and then I'll, I'll probably spend a good hour in the gym, uh, and then on top of training in the dojo, and I still want to keep my wrestling level up, so I still do wrestling training and stuff. So, so you are still in the ring. You mm. your knee is fixed now. Mm -hmm. How long do you want to do this? I'm sorry, like I'm, I'm curious. Just like it seems yeah. like it's such a rough life, until, but it's also a way yeah. of life. Until I die, I, I want to do it. <laughs> you know, which is probably a good two two or three years. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! So no, I I, I have a feeling that. I still have a lot to achieve and my best is still in front of me. Like I know I've had a, like, I think in my mind it was, I was at my peak 12 years ago, 
but now I feel I can reach a different kind of level, especially after having a surgery. It's given me like a new lease, lease of life. And uh, I've given myself having a good run of five years, but I still want to do it for 15, 20. Well, for the rest you know. of your life, you'll be wrestling, you reckon? Yeah, I think so. So um, it's the way of the wrestler kind yeah. of like, but still also, do it till you fall over. Yeah, but sure. also I love teaching people. So if it ever comes to that point, I'd love to open my own dojo here in Japan no, and teach can... people like not only just because I've lived in this society a long time. Mm. I don't speak Japanese. I can speak some small words, but I understand how to live as a gaijin here and a wrestler and how to commu and just get about without having to really delve into becoming, you know. Walking the streets in Japan, looking like a monster as you do, do you get harassed by the cops or anything like that? No, I've been, I mean, they'll look at me. I, I you know, we'll, I'll nod heads with everybody, you know, that I walk past uh, if it's police or another foreigner or someone's looking at me, I'd always give them a head nod. Mm. Um, generally, I, get, I, I do get left alone. Uh, obviously, the old train seat. Oh, <laughs> no one wants to sit we'll next to you. Sit next to you. I think you're probably taking all. I was say, I'm just saying, I'll cancel next to you. We'll I do need try and make seat. myself as small as possible <laughs> when I'm on the train. I do get a seat. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like your arms in itself need a seat each. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I don't sit there like this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try and make myself as small and welcoming <laughs> as possible. Uh, I like to stay hidden, which is why I like mask, hoodie stuff now, <gasps> which is good. Uh, Do people sometimes recognize you on the street? Yeah, in mostly in like Shibuya Shinjuku area, uh, you'll get recognized because that's where a lot of events are held, like mm. in the Shinjuku area as well. And then at the gym, people just Stay. Watch, <laughs> yeah, watch with the gym, so... Um, and sometimes it's okay, like, depending on what mood I'm in, mm. you know. When I first came, I'm like, you know, what are you staring at? What, you know, because uh, my country, you stare at someone, it's... It's you, ready it's for a fight. Yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, I want to fight you. Whereas here, it's just pure, like, oh, that person looks interesting. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Arms or whatnot, you know. Uh, What's the weirdest request you ever got from a fan? Uh, like punch me please or something like that yeah they love uh when we do a sponsor dinner uh you have the the boss of the sponsor dinner and you have his uh you know underneath co-workers him. underneath love seeing him get hit really <laughs> and then he'll kind of light the fire and go uh jackson he says you should buy wrestler no good wrestler and i'm like oh, oh. and then I, I play up to it and he's like no no so then they'll take his t-shirt off the boss <laughs> Yeah. The boss! The boss! They no. strip such all so you could chop such all. Yeah, so, <gasps> yeah. But in, in, in hindsight, the boss, the boss loves it too. Yeah, so it's, you, it's fun. You leave your handprint on them and, oh, you know. Oh. I, like, guess, uh, I guess these are companies which are sponsoring pro wrestling events. Yeah, so boss must be a fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise he wouldn't be no, sponsoring. No, he loves it. Loves, loves it. it. And just leave your handprint on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then, yeah, you end up going through about 20 people chopping them. Fantastic. Yeah. Chopping them. <laughs> yeah. And I try and do it as hard as I can. Yes. <laughs> then I get worried. I got worried and started getting kind of emotional over it uh, probably two years ago. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I just can't do it anymore. Well, emotionally. Yeah. Really? Like hitting, because I'm scared I'm going to kill them. Because oh, I can't go. You, got that power. <laughs> you know, oh. this, no, I'm like, this is pro wrestling. I've been through 23 years of torture. If you want to see what it's like for one second in my life, I'll give you that one second. Ooh. But you're getting that 23 years wrapped into Damn. one hit. A chop is an open hand smack to the chest. Oof. I'm sorry, no. mm. I see. Yeah. So I get two people to stand behind because usually they're going to... Pull backwards. Yeah. Because one guy I did it to, knocked, knocked him out with just a chop. You knocked him out? Yeah, Oof. he was drunk too. <laughs> oh, the first no! the chop knocked him out, they caught him. Uh, should I tell this story? Yes, go oh, on. Okay. It's the end of episode three. <laughs> tell the story. Tell the Producer's story. nodding. So then they pull his pants down oh. and put a lit cigarette in his butt. Hang on, wait. This is the boss. You might have to take <laughs> that one out. <laughs> I'm not sure. Hang on. And then what? Do they take <laughs> a photo? Or they just watch? They, they just like, watch. They're just like, <laughs> like okay, over now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Not like, you know. <laughs> oh, he didn't get hurt, burnt or, you know, it was just like, it's a funny one moment we're all sharing here. <laughs> Japanese variety show taking right. it to the next it is, level. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a cigarette the boss's butt. Yeah. Oh which is why I love Japan, which is the reason why I'm here, is this is the last stronghold of professional wrestling life. Mm. 
I can't live this lifestyle in Australia. Mm. I can't live this lifestyle in America. Mm. I can't live this lifestyle in England. But in Japan, I can live this real pro wrestling life. It's like we're still in that golden era of the 70s, 80s style of pro wrestling. You won't which, get which sued. Which is what I love. Yeah, you won't get sued. People understand that if I'm in the way, I'm going to get hurt. My fault, mm. you know. Uh, you can have a drink without it having that stigma of, oh, you're an alcoholic or whatnot. It's almost like you have to know how to drink here or you're not going to survive. Mm. But that's then again, for companies, the same thing. But then yeah, again, if you it. don't drink, it's still not bad either. Mm. They're not going to force you to drink. Mm. You'll have your oolong tea and mm. you'll still be a part of the party. It but, feels like I'm like with the Vikings right now. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. Drink and battle and yeah. wrestler. This, uh, that's yeah. probably the perfect place to wind this up, yeah? We're <laughs> on time, yeah? We're on time. Fantastic. This has it been was a wonderful so three exciting. episodes. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much no for coming here. in, mate. This I learned a so much. Uh, had a lot of fun. Hopefully I didn't <laughs> tell anything. Uh, that was... Uh, and you're currently yeah. wrestling freelance, so you're yep, working freelance. for several different co- yep, several, companies. Several different companies. Uh, I was signed to a company, but now I'm freelance, so I can kind of get to do my own thing, right. which is great to, at this level of my life. So the freedom is, is wonderful. When if you we go to the see, internet yes. and follow mm. Hartley Jackson, that's where you'll find information about where you can yes. see him wrestle, because he'll have all the information up there yeah. when you come to Japan. Going back to the, the point, so ideally they should message you to get tickets. Yes. So how should people message you? So if they Instagram message me, Twitter message me, uh, it'll come to my inbox. I'll reply. So like a get DM back to them. On, yep. on Twitter or yep. on uh, even Even if it doesn't have to be a DM, it can just be a message or whatnot. And then uh, usually if I'm selling tickets, I'll have the information in the top bar with a link that they can click on. So. And Kathy Cat, if people want to email us, oh. how can they do yes. that? Yes, in case you want to email us, I hope you guys are actually noticing this. It's <laughs> n-i-p-p-o-n at j-o-q-r dot net. Let us know how you enjoyed those episodes. If you have any burning questions you would like to have answered. And uh, please don't forget to rate us. Highest stars that you can get on your podcast platform. And find our official YouTube channel again, Cat with a Beard. From Japan. You're exhausted. Are you? I've never seen her mm. so tired at the end of an episode. Oh, She's like, cat with beard and do the thing. As if it was just so intense. Like, those stories with the exploding bats and, and all of that. I'm just like, that is, wow. Yeah, energy That's just like draining. a whole new world. Yeah. A whole new world. We Thank haven't you even so much for sharing. We haven't made it to the dark side of wrestling, yeah, but that's for a different is. time. Kathy Cat, where can people find you on the internet? It's Kathy Cat Underbar TV on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and generally, if you type it, Kathy Cat both with the C on the YouTubes, you should be able to find me and the channel Ash Japanese as well. And Lady Beard. Go to Lady Beard underscore Japan on the internet. That's where you'll find Lady Beard. Don't forget to follow my pop group baby beard underscore japan we just recorded new songs by the way so new songs mm. coming at you very very soon stay tuned for that hartley jackson at hartley jackson on a th- one thing and then at hartley jackson underscore on a different thing yeah there's pretty there's not many hartley jacksons so okay. once you see the mohawk and beard i think you're <laughs> i think you're in the right direction it's right. been a pleasure sir thank, thank, you. thank you so thank much you for so coming much. in thank absolute you, pleasure thank you, thank you. and ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next time on cat win Bitch! Can we do that pose, all of us? Did the Hartley Jackson pose. The Hartley Jackson pose.